Hi everyone, I'll be installing Fedora KDE Plasma without using a USB drive or DVD. Fedora is also available with GNOME as the desktop as Fedora Workstation, but if you prefer KDE Plasma like I do, then you can download this version. So looking at the hardware requirements for Fedora 42, the latest version, and the minimum system configuration, you'll need a minimum of a 2GHz dual core processor, 2 gigs of system memory, and 15 gigs of unallocated drive space. And for the recommended system configuration, having a 2 GHz quad core processor, 4 gigs of system memory, and 20 gigs of unallocated drive space. Display resolution 1024 by 768 and scrolling down. Graphics hardware, the minimum hardware for accelerated desktops. And Fedora 42 supports most display adapters. So anything modern, feature-rich, desktops like GNOME and KDE Plasma use video devices to provide 3D accelerated desktops. So if you have older graphics hardware, it may not support acceleration. The GMA 9XX, NVIDIA prior to NV30, the GeForce FX 5000 series, and Radeon prior to R300, Radeon 9500. So this hardware is over 20 years old. So if you have any hardware older than 20 years old, it may not be supported. I'm now going to download Fedora 42, I'm going to fedoraproject.org, going to get Fedora, and then going to be downloading the KDE Plasma edition. I'm going to download, and I'm going to download the ISO for Intel and AMD x86-64. Once download, go into your downloads folder, select the image, hit enter or right click and mount, hit open. And this will put it onto a virtual drive. And then next, I'm going to go into disk management. And so we can see my virtual drive, the D drive, which has the image. And then here's my C drive. And I have 415 gigabytes free. So more than enough free space to put Fedora. So I'm going to check the D drive and I'm going to go to properties. And we see here that the image is using about 2,900 megabytes. And I'm going to be using 50 gigabytes for the Fedora OS itself. So altogether, 52,900 megabytes, or about 53,000 megabytes. So I'm going to make some free space. I'm going to shrink my volume. So I'll put in 53,000. Shrink. All right, there's my unallocated space. And now I'm going to make a partition just for the Fedora ISO image. So I'm going to right click, new simple volume, next. I'll put in 3000, next, next, file system, FAT32, and I'll call it ISO, and then next, and finish. All right, we see DF drive has been created. And after Fedora has been installed, I'm going to be removing this partition. So this is only here temporary. Going back into Explorer, I'm going to copy everything from my D drive, going into my F drive, and paste. Going back into disk management. And now your boss should be able to detect this partition with the Fedora image, but if it does not, it may be because it's seen as a basic data partition and it'll need to be seen as an EFI system partition instead. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to go into disk part, run as administrator. Yes. I'm going to list my disks and it's disk zero. Select disk zero. List my partitions, and it's going to be partition number four. Select partition four, type in help, set ID, and then going to scroll up. And I'm going to get the EFI system partition value in hex. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to type in set ID equals, and then paste, enter. All right, it's been successfully set. And if I go into disk management, we see that it has been changed as well. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In my BIOS, I'm going to ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable that as well. And in my boot options, I'm going to change it. So it's going to boot into Fedora. Or if you have a boot override section, you can do a one-time boot into Fedora. All right, we see it's able to boot into the partition and grub comes up. Before starting Fedora KDE Desktop Live, I'm going to have to edit this. So I'm going to hit E to edit. 
I'm going to use the arrow keys to go down and look for this line starting with Linux and using the arrow keys and I'm going to go all the way to the end where it says Fedora KD Live 42 and I'm going to change that and then the label will be ISO because that's the label that I used when setting up the F drive for this partition and then I'm going to hit F10 to boot. All right, it's booted into the live environment. And before running the installer here, I'm going to open up a console. I'm going to type in sudo fdisk-l, which will show all my disks and partitions. And I'm going to be temporarily unmounting the ISO partition, which is dev sda4. Otherwise, the installer won't be able to detect my drive properly. And then after, I'll be remounting it. So sudo umount-l dev sda4. Now I'm going to run the installer. Select my language, English, continue. Next, select installation destination. And there's my disk, it's already been selected. And then storage configuration. By default, when dual booting, it's common to use the same EFI partition as Windows for the Fedora boot files, which is what automatic would do here. But this can be an issue. Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in this EFI partition, which would include Fedora. And this can happen, for example, after a Windows update. So to avoid this, I'll be creating a separate EFI partition just for the Fedora OS boot files. So I'll be using the custom option. And then hit done. So it says here, new Fedora 42 installation. You haven't created any mount points for your Fedora 42 installation yet. You can click here to create them automatically. So if I were to do that, and so it uses BTRFS and it's allocated my partitions, slash home, slash, and slash boot, but most importantly, slash boot, slash EFI, which is using the same EFI partition as Windows. So I'm gonna discard and then reset. All right, and new mount points will use the following partition scheme. So you can use BTRFS, but I'm going to use standard partition and use ext4. As I don't need the advanced options such as snapshotting or sub volumes that are in BTRFS. So I'm going to add in the new mount point, And this is going to be the separate EFI partition just for Fedora. Slash boot slash EFI. And then the size, I'll make it 512 megabytes. Add mount point. All right, now I'm going to label it as EFI Fedora. Next partition. This was going to be for swap. And I have 12 gigs of memory, so I'll do 12 gigs. Now I'll just call this swap. And then the last partition will be for everything else. Now I'll use the remaining space. So I'm just going to hit add mount point. And I'll label it as root. I'm going to hit done. And this screen just gives a summary of all the changes and then hit accept. And I'm going to go back into my console and I'm going to mount the ISO partition again. Oh, forgot to put in sudo. Going back to the installer and then user settings, root account. I'm going to enable the root account. Is used for administering the system. Put in a root password. Hit done. And then user creation. I'm going to put in my full name, username, and password. I'm going to advanced. And these are advanced options. And these default options are just fine, just leave them as is. So I'm going to hit cancel. And I'm going to hit done. And then network and host name says here connected. I'm going to put in a host name, apply, hit done, and then time and date, and then you can put in your time zone, hit done, and then when ready, hit begin installation. And so this will take a little bit of time while it does the install. All right, Fedora is now successfully installed and ready for you to use. Go ahead and reboot your system to start using it. And so before restarting, I'm just going to go into the console. I'm going to type in EFI Boot Manager. And we see the boot order. It says 0000. And then so boot 0000 is Fedora. So it should automatically boot into Fedora. 
But to make sure, I'm going to go into the BIOS just to confirm. So finish installation. And restart. All right, so my boot order, I have Windows Boot Manager, and then there's Fedora, the OS itself, and then there's Fedora, the installation image partition. And so I'll have to change it so it boots into the Fedora OS. And I'm gonna save changes and exit. All right, it's booted up and we see the grub menu. So there's Fedora Linux, and then there's the rescue option and there's the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm gonna go into Fedora Linux. I'm gonna log in. It's booted up as expected. Now I'm going to go back into Windows. Restart. Restart now. And I'm going to scroll down and select Windows. Open up Disk Management. And so there's my three new partitions I created for Fedora. And the installation partition, I no longer need it, so I'm going to delete it and I can't delete volume, it's grayed out. So I'm going to go into disk part to delete it. Run as administrator. Yes, list my disk. It's disk zero. List my partitions. It's partition number four. Select partition four, delete, partition, override. Okay, it's been deleted. Go back into disk management and I'm gonna extend my C drive. Next, next, finish. So that's it. That's how you can install Fedora KDE Plasma in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive or DVD. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.